Hey, what's up? I'm Nathan, and I thought today that I would just go ahead and talk about some just grad school oriented things that are happening with me right now, just because I haven't talked about it in a while. I just thought like end of the month might be a good time to just talk about it. Uh, or I guess beginning of July, because given how I edit videos, it might take me till then to put it on the internet. Anyway, so a lot of the grad school things right now are still very up in the air, especially with everything going on in the world right now and how things are getting worse in the United States with, you know, just being able to go outside without risking your own personal health. There's still a lot of things that are unclear about how classes are going to be structured or like what's going to go on with higher education in general. And this is true at many places. Some places are like doing their fall semester totally remote. Um, or some places are doing like their fall term like shifted in so that people end on Thanksgiving and have like a longer break, but so that the same amount of time is still covered. My institution, currently the plan is that we will start at the same normal time and then we'll get to Thanksgiving. And then after Thanksgiving, everything will be done remotely. I don't know how I feel about that yet. And so that's been set as everyone's operating assumption for how fall term will be structured. But classes haven't really been nailed down yet about like what's gonna be remote, what's gonna be in person, should everything be remote, should everything be in person, the latter is probably not gonna happen. I just wanna know what I'm gonna be doing in the fall and I'm pretty sure that a lot of other people feel that way. So how courses are currently working is that they're trying to figure out what's going to go on with undergraduate stuff first and then after undergraduate stuff is nailed down then they're going to finalize the graduate course schedule at least that's my understanding um so i actually don't know what i'm going to be taking or like what would be feasible for me to take without there being any conflicts end of july is when that's supposed to be solidified but yeah it's gonna be weird i'm gonna have like two and a half weeks in between registering and being on campus doing things and getting familiar with what's going on. But yeah, it, it just kind of is what it is and I'll know what I'm taking at the end of July. I already know that I'll be taking like an intro to teaching sort of seminar style, like how to communicate math thing in the fall. Uh, but other than that, the like mathy math courses, I don't know yet, which is not ideal. Gives me like this much anxiety about how the fall is gonna go. But yeah, that aside, instead of like focusing on that smidgen of uncertainty that can surely induce a little bit of anxiety, I am focusing on studying for the algebra qualifying exam, which is something that I've mentioned, I think in the past like one or two, videos that I've done. And so the reason I'm focusing on algebra this summer is because one, algebra is not in my intended field of study, or at least I haven't seen a lot of algebra come up in my intended fields of study. And two, algebra is not, or abstract algebra, not necessarily algebra, but abstract algebra is not necessarily my strongest suit when it comes to theoretical math. And so by focusing on building that understanding and Potentially, if things work out, or I have to ask some people if I can actually take it or not, we'll find that out too. But it was recommended to me that I do, so I'm gonna just operate on an assumption that I can. Um, studying for this exam is going to make it so that, one, I have a better foundation in algebra, and two, if I pass the test, and that would be cool, then I don't really have to take an algebra sequence. Um, mind you, I don't have to take an algebra sequence anyway, I just think that algebra is kind of like a core thing in math and understanding some things about algebra helps in other fields like topology and yeah. And so for that reason, a lot of the theoretical mathematics stuff that I'm going to be doing for the rest of the summer is going to be in the realm of abstract algebra and things like that, which I've already started doing that with my last video, but I need to do a follow-up video to that because um, there's more there. and. I reference it in the comment section, but what I present is sort of like a diluted version of what's actually going on. So that's a thing. If you want to check that out, it's also, I think it's over here. So you might be wondering like, what is 
a qualifying exam or what does it mean and what will you be actually studying for for this qualifying exam the answer to that is really depends on where you're going what a qualifying exam is so at my institution qualifying exams are a written test um, other places it could be an oral examination with a panel of professors from your institution passing an exam it also has different criteria so like written test it's kind of self-explanatory what it means to pass that but then in other places um, you might have to have a professor on the panel agree to be your thesis advisor in order for you to pass the exam independent of how well you present which i feel is weird but yeah anyway aside from different types of qualifying exams mine is going to be a written exam and for written exams at my institution that means that there is like one of six different mathematical areas that you can take an exam in. I'm studying for algebra right now. The other one that I intend to take is real analysis, but I could also take like a complex analysis exam or a logic exam or an applied math exam. I think there's a stats one too, but different places, if they do have written exams, those written exams will either be like one comprehensive thing about any type of math ever that they could put on there or it'll be split up like it is at my institution where it's one major area and problems are then subdivided into sections on the test itself. I do have examples of the qualifying exam in my possession, but those are things that are not publicly handed out by my university, so I'm not going to share any of those problems because I understand that test security is a thing, but here is what is in a algebra qualifying exam because this is posted on my institution's website so i feel like it's okay for me to go ahead and share mind you this was last updated in 2003 so i'm studying off of something that was written 17 years ago and also past exams for i want to say like the past six or seven years that it was offered so between those two things, I should be okay, but the fact that this was written 17 years ago makes me a little bit uneasy. So, the algebra qualifying exam is broken up into three sections. There is a section on groups, there's a section on rings and fields, and there is a section on modules and linear algebra, I think. Yeah, modules and linear algebra. So, I'm just gonna do this like Claire Saffitt's reading the ingredient style because I also want to see if I can edit that. So this is what is in the groups section of the algebra qual. Elementary group actions, groups acting on sets and algebraic objects, groups, rings, vector spaces, etc. The orbit equation and applications, transitive actions, isomorphisms, automorphisms, groups of automorphisms, the isomorphism theorem, the correspondence theorem, or the lattice isomorphism theorem, the general structure of groups, the theorems of Lagrange, Cauchy, Cayley, and Silo, direct and semi-direct products, normal series, solvability, nil potence, the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, elementary facts concerning P groups and their structure, the symmetric and alternating groups, the dihedral groups, Groups, other groups of rigid motion, matrix groups, free abelian groups. So that's just groups. I'm also going to do this for rings and fields and modules and linear algebra because this was fun. Uh, editing me might not think that because it probably took forever, but I just think it's going to look cool in the end, which is why I'm continuing. For rings and fields, we have special classes of rings, matrix rings, polynomial rings, notarian rings, artinian rings, local rings, important substructures, subrings, one-sided and two-sided ideals, prime and maximal ideals, the nil radical, the Jacobson radical, the Chinese remainder theorem, ring isomorphism theorems, factorizations, UFDs or universal factorization domains, PIDs, which I think means principal ideal domains, Euclidean domains, localization and fields of quotients, Gauss lemma, primitive elements, Einstein's criterion. Oh, it's not Einstein, it's Eisenstein's criterion. <laughs> Basic facts about field and field extensions, algebraic, transcendental, normal, separable, and Galois extensions. Splitting fields of polynomials, elementary Galois theory. For modules in linear algebra, submodules, quotient modules, semi-simplicity, linear independence, generating sets, bases, 
of free modules, homomorphisms, endomorphisms, isomorphisms, and the isomorphism theorems, basic linear algebra, the algebra of linear transformations, inner product spaces, orthogonality, the Gram-Schmidt process for orthogonalization, the algebra of a single linear transformation, matrix representations of linear transformations, characteristic and minimal polynomials, the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, Jordan canonical form. These are the things that I have like literally no idea what they're talking about. And these are the things that I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. So all in all, a qualifying exam is a lot of things. In the title here, I've said that I don't have any context for the exam. I do have like, I mean, I do have old tests, but what I mean by context there is I don't really know like what level I should be shooting for, right? I haven't taken a graduate course before. I don't know what graduate proofs should look like. I have an idea of what they should look like, but that's currently the major thing that I'm working on is developing that understanding. Um, there are a few resources mentioned on these notes and I've already started like going through a few of the resources and like writing out my own versions of proofs of all the theorems that come up in the readings. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Also backing up a little bit, I don't know if CELO is pronounced silo or CELO, but I was always told in undergrad that it was CELO, and I did two projects on this thing, and I still don't remember it. So yeah, that's basically all the updates I have regarding all the things that I am currently working on and what's going on with my PhD endeavors. If you enjoyed this video, I do have other videos where I talk about PhD things. Also, I'm going into math, so there's a ton of math content on this channel as well if you enjoy that, so you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more math slash PhD endeavors content as well. As always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you, or I guess this was Chalkless, this one was Chalkless, so yes, Chalkless, but otherwise, anyway, same thing, I am Nathan, this, is, this was Chalkless, and I will see you next time. No ether, no, oh, no Therian rings. I know it's like ne neuter is her name. Neuterian, is it Neuterian rings? I think that's, that's how it's pronounced. Neuterian rings. Mm -hmm.